we have breaking news as the ProShares Bitcoin ETF starts trading tomorrow and in the Ripple versus SEC case, the Ripple team fires back at the SEC's request to delay discovery once again. If we haven't met before, my name is Frank Cho and I'm here to help you live a richer life. And on this channel, we talk about cryptocurrency, personal finance and investing. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, do it now, that way I can keep you informed of all the latest news and updates. And don't forget to hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Now let's take a very quick look at the crypto market before we dive right in. We're up about a percent and a half from this time yesterday at 2.46 trillion with Bitcoin at 61.365, Ethereum at 37.50, and XRP at a dollar eight sitting in that six spot solana is on the rise but xrp has recovered even more so the distance is still there but it's down to about three billion in market cap so they are catching up there on coindesk we have pro shares with their bitcoin futures etf ready to start trading on the new york stock exchange beginning tomorrow which is tuesday the 19th this is really exciting news for the crypto space because this leads the way for other ETFs to be able to enter the space and hopefully we can get a spot ETF. So ProShares will launch their ETF on the New York Stock Exchange tomorrow as confirmed in their SEC filing today. The SEC approved this futures ETF on Friday and they filed this all the way back in the early summer. This fund is linked to Bitcoin futures that are tra traded on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. The SEC has been considering lots of different ETFs uh, with Bitcoin. Gary Gensler has made it really clear as he's talked that he has been uh, more keen on the futures market for the ETFs rather than the spot markets. But nonetheless, this is an exciting step and this will lead the way for future developments in the space. News of long-awaited approval for Bitcoin-related ETFs sent the world's largest crypto by market value to levels not seen since April. As we've talked about recently, Bitcoin climbed to its highest ever weekly close over 60,000 and as of today is over 61. There are of course hopes that we will have a Bitcoin ETF that will be on the spot markets. Much more to come here. This can open the door, of course, for altcoins to be able to be included in future ETFs. Imagine, if you will, a uh, index of altcoins similar to what you see with an S&P 500 uh, index for equities. So very exciting times. We'll have much more to come as further developments come out. Now, courtesy of John Deaton on his Crypto Law website here, again, his document library, Everything from the case is available here so that you can go back and see what's been written, what's been said. Really good repository of information. This was just posted today, Ripple's letter in opposition to the SEC request for extension of expert discovery. We'll take a look at it here, addressed to Judge Torres and coming from Andrew Ceresny, who we recall to be the former director of the Division of Enforcement at the SEC, you see Mary Jo White there as well on their team representing Ripple, the company, versus the other attorneys we talk about a lot um, that are representing Garling House and Larson. Now this one again is pretty short, it's about three full pages. There's some things in here that I think are worth mentioning and taking a closer look at, especially as they will cite many of the things the XRP community has been highlighting over the course of the last few days. Let's take a look. Dear Judge Torres, we write on behalf of Defendant Ripple Labs in opposition to the SEC's letter dated October 15th, which seeks a two month extension of the court ordered expert discovery deadline. While Ripple is prepared to meet the original schedule as an accommodation to the SEC, it has agreed to extend the deadline for rebuttal expert reports to November 12th. Accordingly, this dispute concerns only the date by which expert deposition should be completed, which Ripple proposes should be December 10th. A December 10th deadline provides four full weeks after the service of rebuttal reports to complete expert depositions. This proposal is reasonable and achievable. The respective parties have the resources to complete discovery on that timetable. Certain depositions can be scheduled immediately. 
and each of Ripple's experts are available to be deposed within that time frame. The SEC's proposed deadline of January 14th, by contrast, would needlessly prolong discovery despite both parties' stated intention to resolve this litigation on an expedited timeline and this court's observation in its October 4th uh, order denying intervention. This is what's been cited a lot. So if you follow with the community on Twitter, um, this is what's been pointed out. In response to Deaton's motion to intervene, this was what Judge Torres said. Discovery in this action has already been extended and the court is not inclined to permit further delay. That's really key because if the court's not willing to allow Deaton to have his motion to intervene because of unnecessary delay, then why should the court allow the SEC this privilege of having more time when they're already so privileged they've said so themselves? Now let's continue further. In addition, further delay would prejudice Ripple and the market for XRP, and the SEC has failed to demonstrate good cause to extend the deadline beyond December 10th. In fact, on literally the day before filing its motion, the SEC represented to Ripple that expert discovery could be completed by December 22nd, and was even willing to move that deadline to the 17th just one week later from Ripple's proposed deadline. Yet despite that concession, mere hours before filing, the SEC suddenly claims that expert discovery cannot be completed until mid-January. So you see what's happening here. They're trying to work it out, hashing it out back and forth. Ripple says a date, the SEC says a date, but then the SEC goes behind Ripple's back and proposes a totally different date all the way in January of next year to the court in their letter. The SEC's request for a two-month extension of expert discovery should be denied, and the court should order that the expert discovery deadline be extended to December 10th, as Ripple has proposed. And then, of course, in the exhibits, they have a proposed order. Ripple is still going above and beyond here. They're giving them extra time. Note that. They're saying, extend to December 10th. So they're giving them four more weeks out of all of this. So the SEC is still winning. The Ripple team just doesn't want to give them another full month on top of those four weeks. So they're making a, a pretty big concession here. I can't imagine a scenario where uh, Judge Torres wouldn't find this to be a reasonable compromise. The SEC wants two months. Ripple says, hey, we'll give you one month. We won't even fight that. We just think that two months is too long. Let me know your thoughts down below if you think that that's a fair compromise. All right, here's going to be their arguments. Point one, just before filing this motion, the SEC proposed a December 17th deadline. Ripple has sought in good faith to reach agreement with the SEC on the expert discovery deadlines without court intervention. Ripple agreed, for instance, to extend the expert rebuttal report deadline to November 12th after the SEC indicated it was not able to meet the deadline ordered by the court, mind you, of October 29th. Although Ripple was prepared and able to complete expert discovery by the court order deadline, Ripple negotiated in good faith with the SEC to reach a compromise. The SEC's initial proposal made just three days before it filed its motion was to extend the close to December 22nd. The SEC's stated reason was the number of experts involved and the work to be performed. The many fact discovery disputes pending before the court and the fact that our proposed schedule would not implicate any other impending deadlines. On October 14th, the day before the SEC filed its motion, Ripple again to accommodate the SEC countered with a December 10th deadline. Ripple was also prepared to immediately start scheduling depositions of experts for whom no rebuttal report will be filed, which would mean that the parties would have completed a meaningful part of the depositions by mid-November. The SEC did not agree and even proposed a deadline of December 17th. In other words, on the very day the SEC filed a motion asking the court for an extension to January 14th, they had already said they could be done by December 17th. Putting aside the SEC's inconsistency with its own prior positions, the letter offers no argument whatsoever to suggest 
that an extension to January is necessary. The SEC devotes significant effort to arguing that Ripple's December 10th proposal is not reasonable, a contention that's wrong for the reasons below. We'll look at them in a second. But the SEC never even tries to argue that an additional month beyond that date is necessary. The SEC has failed, again, to carry its burden of demonstrating good cause for an extension into January. Ripple's proposed date of December 10th is reasonable and appropriate. It appears that there will be a combined total of 14 experts identified by the parties. As the SEC notes, Ripple's proposal allows 18 business days after the submission of rebuttal reports for those depositions. The SEC's complaint that this is not enough is baseless. First, it should be possible to depose multiple experts either before or immediately after rebuttal reports are submitted because several experts are unlikely to be subject to rebuttals. Ripple has already informed the SEC that it does not intend to submit a rebuttal report in response to one of the SEC's experts. The SEC has declined to provide reciprocal information, but Ripple anticipates that at least one or perhaps several of it, its experts will be unrebutted. Those experts can be deposed at any time beginning right now. In addition, there's no reason why there cannot be multiple expert depositions in a single day. The SEC has eight attorneys assigned to this case, including six who took depositions during fact discovery. That is more than enough to cover two simultaneous expert depositions should the need arise. And there is likely no need if the unrebutted reports or experts are deposed before November 12th, then even if zero depositions happen during the week of November 15th and allow, in order to allow the SEC to digest and analyze multiple rebuttal reports, that still leaves 13 business days to conduct the remaining depositions. The parties have more than sufficient resources to do that. Finally, extending expert discovery to January 2022 will unduly prejudice Ripple and continue to freeze XRP markets in the U.S. This is what we are the most concerned with because we've seen the price locked in at this level consistently now here over a period of time in that dollar or so range, plus or minus a little bit. We had a pullback in the summer, came back, but it's never been able to fully recover and even get anywhere near its all-time high as other altcoins have seen massive rallies during this bull run. The SEC's proposal, uh, proposal to extend expert discovery by more than two months will further prejudice Ripple. Thus, the court can and should deny the SEC's motion on this basis alone. The SEC's claim that its proposed extension would not prejudice defendants in any material way ignores the obvious. The pendency of this lawsuit has significantly hurt the markets for XRP, especially in the U.S. Ripple's cross-border payment product relies on liquid XRP markets. The SEC well knows that within days of its filing suit, almost 20 exchanges delisted or suspended XRP trading in the U.S. And it still is suspended, as you are well aware. Uphold is one of the few ones in the U.S. where you can buy it. It's linked down in the video description. But when you think of the other big players from Coinbase to Kraken and on and on and on, there's just no opportunity for XRP to be bought or sold. Very, very important to understand that this does, of course, prejudice Ripple and the XRP holders who now have a say in this case, courtesy of our friend, John Deaton. This has critically damaged the market for XRP. Every additional day this suit is pending is a day in which the XRP markets, markets that Ripple depends on for its product offerings, remain frozen in the U.S., that is severely prejudicial to Ripple's business. The SEC offers no substantive response. Instead, it merely argues in a footnote that Ripple has made continued robust sales of XRP and that XRP's price has risen during the pendency of the litigation. That Ripple's business, particularly overseas, not here domestically, and the XRP markets, again, principally overseas, have shown some resilience in the face of the SEC's lawsuit does not mean that Ripple and the XRP markets have not been and continue to be severely damaged by the pendency of this suit. Indeed, although the price of XRP has risen in the last year along with the broader digital currency market, 
its performance has lagged behind the market, including currencies like Bitcoin and Ether. And they're going to give some prime examples there of the percentage changes from Bitcoin to Ethereum to XRP. And you can see stark differences between all three of them. Finally, any delay beyond Ripple's proposed expert discovery timeline would necessarily impact the timing of summary judgment motions, a delay that is unnecessary and highly prejudicial to Ripple. In addition, the SEC claims that pending discovery motions between Judge Netburn would delay any motions for summary judgment, but there are still two months until the end of expert discovery under Ripple's proposal, allowing time for Judge Netburn who has promptly resolved all disputes in the past to decide those pending motions. Any extension of the expert discovery scheduled in this case beyond December 10th would cause prejudice to Ripple and the XRP markets, and though not cited, to XRP holders in particular. In addition, the SEC has not met its burden of showing that there is good cause to extend the schedule to January 14th of 2022. The SEC's efforts to unnecessarily and prejudicially delay resolution of this case with an extension to January 14th should be denied and the court should only extend expert discovery to December 10th. There you have it. The Ripple team being very reasonable here, already saying SEC will allow four extra weeks. That should be plenty of time, even with the Thanksgiving holiday, even giving you time to be able to mull things over, to digest all of these things coming in. That still gives you plenty of time to do one deposition a day. You also are fully capable of doing two a day because of the resources you have dedicated to this case. So it's more than enough time. Let's not delay it another full month. This is beyond reasonable. So that's the argument being made here. Not saying we totally shoot you down. It's a compromise. I think that the court's going to look really favorably on this because they are offering up a compromise, giving the SEC extra time, but not so much so that it will delay the case even further. And most importantly, I think, they even cite Judge Torres herself and what she said in the motion to intervene about Deaton and the possible delays. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I want to know what you think about this. Is the Ripple offer reasonable and do you think that the court will allow it? Let me know what you think. Thank you for spending some of your time here with me. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I promise it's worth your while and I will keep you up to date on the latest news. If you found any value here, do make sure to hit that like button on the way out. Thank you again for spending some of your precious time with me. I do truly appreciate it. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.